Welcome to part C, uh, the place and livability for the uh, working out your climate graph. So in this lesson, we're going to look at well, what is a climate graph, how do we get the data, and how do we construct a climatic graph. Let's get started. First question that we're going to answer is, well, what is a climate graph? It's a big one. So underneath here, and if you want to do the same, if you just type climatic graph or climate graph into Google, you click on the images, you're going to find a whole range of different climate graphs. But really, a climate graph is a combination graph that shows us two variables. It's going to show us temperature and rainfall. It shows us one in a line graph, which is temperature, and it shows us precipitation or rainfall in a bar graph. It has two different axes, so on one side you've got temperature, on the other side here you've got rainfall, and hopefully you can see along the bottom there you've got those letters and they are the months of the year. A climate graph is a really useful way of visually seeing what sort of a climate and what sort of environment we are looking at. So what you guys are going to have to do is if you're going to have to create your own climate graph over here in this little space here on the broadsheet. So where do we get the information from? Oh, let's get that now. So how do we get the data is the big question. And where you're going to go to is the Bureau of Meteorology, uh, .gov.au, the bomb. We're going to give you, we'll give you this uh, link here on your Google Classroom. Uh, or we'll email it to you. So you don't, we're not, we won't go through that in here now. Um, but what it's going to give you is it's going to give you a lot of data about your location. So you, what you're going to have to do here is click this little section here. will give you an option to select either temperature or rainfall. You're going to have to do both, and I'll show you what happens on the next slide when you do both. You'll type in your location here. So I've typed in Cronulla because that's what I'm doing. It then gives me this little option to select on Cronulla. And then below, it'll tell me the stations that are closest. So there might be some of you out there that are choosing a suburb or a location that doesn't have a climate station. And if you fall into that category, you're just going to have to choose one that's closest. And that's fine. You'll find that the difference uh, for most of us that are doing locations in the southern areas of Sydney, um, the difference, say, between a Cronulla and a, um, you know, even probably to... A, you know, a certain extent, like the airport, Hurstville, um, Sutherland, um, yes, Sylvania, or Menai, um, you know, Barden Ridge, they're all going to be, all those areas are going to have a fairly similar climate. Um, so if, you don't, if you've got a, a location that doesn't come up, then that's fine. You just click on the location that is closest and you go with that. All right, on the next page, I'm going to show you the data that you end up getting. Okay, so this is the two types of data. I've uh, just snapshotted them both out, um, but this one here and this one here are both separate. And they're right at the bottom of the page. You've got to scroll right down to the bottom once you've got the data. And in class, we'll show you, your teachers will show you how you go and where you go to get it. Uh, but this first one here is rainfall. This one first is your precipitation. And this bottom one here is your temperature. And the one that we're looking at is we're looking for the mean. The mean being the average, that's the one that we're looking for. And you can see here for every month, you've got an average. So for rainfall, if we think about rainfall, you can see uh, that in January, there was 97.5 uh, millimetres of rainfall. February, 118. March, 130.2. Now if we think about temperature, temperature in January, the average temperature, 26.6, then 26.5, 25.3, and so on. That's the data, that first one, the mean data, is the data that you're going to be using to create your climate graph. All right, so here we are. This is where we're going to be doing our climate graph. So the things that you're going to have to do, you're going to have to write in the station, whereabouts it is. You're going to have to do the latitude and longitude be able to get that from one of your other maps, or if you've done, you haven't done that yet, then you get that from Google Earth. Uh, here is your two axes, so your temperature and precipitation on that side. And I'm going to suggest that you do something down here. 
You don't have to do this, but I'm going to suggest that you do it because I think it's going to make it a little bit easier when you're uh, creating the, the graph. So you can see here I've put in my information. Now this is what I was suggesting you do. Down the bottom here, just rule up little boxes uh, and divide it in two, have temperature at the top, precipitation at the bottom, and you'll be able to just write in the data at the bottom, underneath the months. It's just going to make it a lot easier. It's going to make it uh, harder for you to make a mistake, I've always found. I've always found if you don't have the data there and you're going off a piece of paper next to you, very easy to, to you know, graph the wrong, uh, the wrong piece of information. But if you've got it underneath here, in this little area here, you know, it's, it's less likely that you're going to make an error there. So that's going to be my suggestion. Once you've done that, you can see here that I have put in all of my data at the bottom. And then you're going to have to do, on both sides, temperature on one side, precipitation on the other, you're going to have to put in the values on the axes. For temperature, I've gone up in twos because I knew that my top temperature was 26. I didn't go above that. And on the precipitation side, I've gone up in, uh, I think I've gone up in 20s because I, I knew my top, temp, my top precipitation was about, I think, 160 odd. So what you need to make sure, you need to make sure that you choose a unit that is going to fit. It's no point in going up in one for temperature if you know that you're not going to have enough room at the top. And likewise, don't go up for precipitation if your highest value is 40 don't go up in 50 because it's just going to not give you enough definition. So choose a value that's going to make sense for your axes. I think you're going to find that if you go up in twos and go up in twenties, um, it will make it lot, lots more easier. It probably will make it a lot easier and it's going to make it, it it's worked for me. I'm going to take a guess that it's going to work for you. So if you want to go up in those in twos and twenties uh, respectively, then I think that you'll find that that will be um, you know, a very workable scale. All right, so what you've got to do, remembering that temperature is the line graph, precipitation is the bar graph, then you just uh, you go ahead and you start creating, those, uh, creating the data points. For temperature, what you will really want to make sure here is that when you plot these dots, you plot the dots in the middle of the bar not on each side, plot them in the middle of the bar. And for obviously for a bar graph, just uh, as you would usually draw up the bars. We'll talk about why it's important um, to plot them in the middle uh, on the next slide. All right, so once you've plotted it in the middle, you're then gonna connect up. Yeah, connect up all the dots at the top. And the reason you plot in the middle here is especially for this section here at the end. Well, what we do is we look at the temperature for January and December. And in December, it's 25, and in January, it's 26. And, then, and you can see here, I just rounded these. I've rounded these numbers, and you're, gonna, it's more, you're more than happy for you to round them again. In December, the next month is January. It goes back around to January. And so from December to January, it goes up one degree. So you're going to have your line just flick up a little bit. And in January, the month before was December, so it's, from, it's actually going to just go down just a little bit. Not to 24, but just down a little bit. What I would always suggest, I'd always suggest that when you use a colour, red for temperature, blue for precipitation, you colour that in, so it gives you a really nice visual uh, representation of um, climate for your location. Alright, hopefully you have done your climatic graph now. And that means that we've only got one more lesson now until we're finished. We've got one more lesson to finish, uh, to do on locating a few uh, places in Sydney and doing some work with photog photographs, so aerial and oblique photographs. All right, we're looking forward to seeing you for the last lesson for Place and Livability yep. next time. Have a good holiday. All right, bye.